Okay, it's time for another Python demo. Uh, we're gonna build on what we learned before and this time show how to provide derivatives to the optimizer. So actually to build off, I'm just gonna copy and paste from our last demo. And then I'm gonna simplify a bunch of stuff. So let's see, last time we saved this history, uh, I showed you how to you know, save things in history. We're not gonna do that this time. Um, yeah, here. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, then we won't need to return that history there. I'm just kind of cleaning up here. Get rid of that plotting. And then we're gonna use a simpler function. So this was showing you how you could pass in different parameters to your optimization, right? Uh, which is a very common thing to do, but we're gonna use a very simple objective here. In fact, we're just gonna get rid of all this stuff. Okay. So before we had uh, this kind of block of things that we don't need to change. And then we just change our objective. We're gonna to have to change this block a little bit now because we're gonna provide derivatives. But once we do that, we're gonna be able to keep reusing it. We don't need this anymore. This is an external function we're gonna use. So actually this time what we're gonna optimize, I actually tried to make one on the fly for the video and I came up with an infeasible problem. So let's use one that I know works. Here's this simple problem right here. It's just a 2D problem, has two constraints, fairly straightforward. There's nothing special. I just need something that I can take derivatives um, on the fly here in the video. So I already wrote those out just to save time. This is what they were, or this is what they are, F and G, our objective and our inequality constraints, okay? So remember we had this function that we defined and we just kind of separated things out just to avoid redundancies. You don't have to do this, this is gonna save you about two times the function calls. All right, so what I'd like to do now is I wanna modify this. I wanna um, also return the derivatives. And I don't know exactly how sci is gonna use that yet. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna first worry about just providing these. So uh, F is a scalar, so this is gonna be a gradient vector, one entry for each entry of X, so we have length two. Um, I'll just do it all here on the fly. Um, I could form a NumPy array, but I'll just form this regular list here. So the derivative with respect to x0 is going to be 2 times x0 uh, minus, oops, minus 0 0.5. And then the partial of f with respect to x1 is just minus 1. Okay, and then I, I want to be careful uh, so that we don't get confused and write out nx and ng explicitly. So the number of variables for x is 2, the number of nonlinear constraints is 2. I'm writing that out so that when I initialize G, I don't really wanna just write two, two, cause then it's hard to see what order I'm actually doing here. Normally they're not the same, so it's obvious, uh, but you know, normally, yeah, the number of variables and constraints have no relationship to each other, but uh, well, they still don't have a relationship, but it's happened to be the same. Normally we think of it this way. Um, it's a, uh, for example, the, sorry, this is DG, the Jacobian, index ij would be uh, dgi dxj. So this would be the normal order. I think Python wants me to have another pair of parentheses there, but okay. So I'm just gonna initialize that. And now this is gonna mean, and I don't know necessarily this is the way the optimizer wants it, but this is the way we'd normally write a Jacobi and I'll deal with that part later. So zero, zero means the derivative of the zero with constraint with respect to my zero with variable here. So that's the derivative of this respect to x0, that's gonna be two times x0 minus four. Now the derivative of my zero constraint with respect to x1 is just one. And then dg11, one, one, oh, sorry, one zero. My first constraint respect to zero, x0 zero is uh, one times x0 minus one. And then the derivative of constraint one with respect to x1 is two times x1. Okay, so then I return those and hopefully I did that right. All right, so we now need to go look at the documentation for SciPy to see what kind of format we need to use here. So looks uh, like so I got it here in my history here. SciPy minimize. Um, so let's scroll down. Okay, there's an option, JAC Jacobian, 
little bit unfortunately named because it's actually a gradient. So method for computing the gradient vector. Uh, if it's, it could be, uh, it looks like you could do, uh, if it's callable, it should be a function that returns the gradient vector. So it could be a separate function where X is an array, uh, R is a tuple, or it could be a Boolean. And if it's true, then my normal function is assumed to return the objective and gradient as this tuple FG. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna return them both from one function. So let's say I need to go to my options here, not options, sorry. This is one of the options of the function. I'm gonna say my Jacobian true. So that says that this thing, this function that's being passed in function should return two things, both F and G. Okay, uh, well, DF rather, G here is the gradient, which is somewhat confusing. <clears throat> not the inequality constraints. So I need to return two things and I'll worry about getting that later. I'm just gonna make a note that I need to return those two things. Um, okay, uh, let's see, what else? I need to figure out how to do the constraints. So the constraints, unfortunately in the format is not quite the same and it's confusing. There's some conflicting documentation here. So it says, that uh, constraint definitions only for, so the only these three algor algorithms deal with constraints. If you use this algorithm, it says to use these things. If you use these algorithms, it says to use this. I tried that actually, it seems like they all just use this now. So this one doesn't seem to work at all. So we're gonna ignore that. In fact, I just have to get rid of this whole thing here. And let's use this one, nonlinear constraint. So there's a function here, nonlinear constraint. So I need to import that. Okay, I'm just going to be explicit here. So my constraints are a nonlinear constraint. Um, and it wants a function, so I can't return it in that same function because it wants me to give it a new kind of function. Um, and I can, this is kind of nice, I can provide different bounds. So normally the default was actually greater than or equal to zero instead of less than or equal to zero, but I cannot do it either way here. Um, so I'm going to define a function. Oh, the Jacobian, and I'm not going to fill it in yet, but it, let's see what it wants. Um, lower upper bounds method of computing it. So I can do a finite difference, or I can give it the name of the function. Okay, so yeah, so I give it the function of the constraints. That's this one. So the first argument is going to be the function, and then I can put lower and upper bounds on the constraints. And then Jacobian here is another function, which I'm gonna call the same name. That's gonna give me the derivative. So I have to return them actually in two separate functions here. So it says I could do two point, that's gonna be a four difference, three point, that's gonna be a central difference, CS, yes, that's gonna be a complex step. So I could do any of those, or I can give it a function where it says it wants to return uh, an array. It could be a sparse array, but it should be the shape MN. Okay, uh, so it says where element ij is the partial of fi with respect to xj. That's good because that's the format I used. Uh, I don't need a Hessian. I don't. I'm not doing a finite difference. I'm not specifying a sparsity, although that's a good thing to do if you have a sparse structure. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use our format rather than the normal SciPy format, which is g is less than or equal to zero because that's the way I wrote it. I just copied that example. So that means my lower bound should be um, minus infinity and the upper bound should be zero. So that means G has to be less than or equal to zero. Notice it says that these could be arrays or it says, or it could be a scalar. And if it's a scalar, it's just gonna use the same bound for all the components. And I'm using the same for each. So just to stay simple, I'll just write a scalar here. And this thing here is gonna have to return DG. All right. so. I think I have the things I need there. Um, but what I have to deal with now is uh, I have to make these things work because they're not returning all the stuff I want. So before we saved F and G, and now I need to save DF and DG. And so now I've got to add those to my list, DF last, DG last, so I can use them. 
And then this objcon function we defined, it returns four things. So I need all of those. And remember what we're doing here. Um, what this says is, uh, I know that the same X tends, is gonna get reused multiple times and it's making me separate these out, but I, I don't wanna have to recall this function at the same X if I already have it. That's gonna you know, double or maybe triple my function calls. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking and seeing if these are equal and I just skip this, I don't evaluate the function and I just return the last values that I've already saved. Um, if they're not equal, then I do update it. I call the function again and I update all of these values and I update my last X. So these other functions are gonna look basically the same. I just copy and paste that. I just return something else. And then I copy and paste that return something else. So now these are gonna just work. I gotta copy this line too. I gotta say, I'm gonna use these variables in that loop. They should be the same as ones out. Okay. So those should work whether I wanna provide derivatives or not. I could just keep these here. And if I don't wanna provide derivatives, for example, I can just you know, take this to false and then it won't call those functions. I could take this one out here too. All right. Um, maybe that will work. Let's try it. All right, so I got a true here for success. So, and uh, this does look to be the right answer. So looks like it worked. Um, so uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, which is uh, another useful thing here. So let's just check here. I just want to look through these options. Yeah, we don't need a Hessian. Keep feasible. That's something you generally don't want to do. So this would try to keep the constraint components feasible. Um, that doesn't work for every optimizer and that's generally not a good idea. It is a good idea for bounds, but for any quality constraints, it's usually more efficient if you can also search through feasible space. If you change the step size and find difference, we're not doing that. Okay, um, but yeah, this is nice. It has a complex step option, that's new. Let me go back to the actual function. Uh, tolerance option here, method. So um, if you give constraints, the default is gonna be SLSQP. So I'll just go write that explicitly. So just see, yep, it was the default. There's another one that's new, wasn't here at least, or at least from last time I used this. Um, this one here looks pretty interesting. Trust constrained. Um, if you go and look here at the, a little more down here in the docs, it describes a little bit of these briefly. So these are the ones for constrained. This one, it's a trust region for constrained, but it's actually switches between two things. Um, so if it's equality constraint, it uses an SQP method. If it's inequality, it's gonna use a trust region interior point method. These are things we're gonna be talking about this next week, SQP and interior point. Um, so it's nice to have options because sometimes one method will work better for a given problem than another. And so being able to just flip options by changing a name is a very helpful thing, uh, you know, because you know, it's hard to know beforehand one, one algorithm may be more suited for your particular problem. All right, I think that's also, again, the key here is to use this nonlinear constraint. That's also a new thing that didn't, well, yeah, this, this one just it didn't work for me as far as I could tell. All right, so I think that's it. Uh, see you next time.